today's gospel. It can be found on page 785 in your pew Bible. Our gospel today comes from Matthew, chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil things against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and from our Savior, Jesus Christ. While serving at my last church in Davenport, Iowa, we had a weekly routine of preschool chapel. Every Tuesday and Wednesday morning, a group of two, three, and four-year-olds marched into the sanctuary to sing songs, to hear a message of love, and to pray together. When it came to my turn to lead worship, I arrived a little early one morning and hung out in the back of the sanctuary. And as they did every week, the kids came walking in, holding on to that rope, which keeps them in a nice line. And they passed by this great big stained glass window. And on this particular morning, I noticed this wonderful light coming through the stained glass window. The light shone through and cast a brilliant rainbow of color that sparkled on the sanctuary floor. And I wasn't the only one who noticed. It was fun to watch as the kids noticed as well. Some even commented, look at the rainbow, and then a couple of them started to change their steps in order to step on the different colors, and it looked a bit like a dance. The colors sparkling on the floor were pretty. And as I followed the streams of light back to the window, I actually looked at the window. It's funny how you can walk by something every day without actually looking at it. So I studied that stained glass window, And right at eye level was something that stayed with me. There were these four circles, and in the center was a cross. And in each circle was a name and an image. Saint Matthew, Saint Mark, Saint Luke, Saint John. These are names and images of people that are important to us. They're important to our faith, they're important to our lives, so important that we put them in colorful glass and adorn our sanctuaries with them. Even here at Trinity, these images and these names are front and center in our own sanctuary. These men are important because we hear their words each week as we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. But why do we call them saints? Why do we call anyone a saint? Now some would say that a saint is someone who got killed for Christ maybe in the first three centuries. Some would say a saint is someone who was a religious hero of the church and who had chapels and churches and beautiful windows built in honor of them. Some would say that a saint is someone who's very virtuous Or maybe they would say a saint is someone who has died. And while all of these things may be
be true about saints or about some saints. There's more to it. Look at these images in the front of our sanctuary. The light shines through these images. Now, if we were in here about 4 o'clock this afternoon, we would see the rays of light cast onto the floor. And this is why they are saints. They are saints because they are people through whom the light of God shines and this light inspires all around them. They're not saints because they're more courageous than you and me, not because they're more intelligent, not because they're kinder or more compassionate, not because they exhibit some sort of exemplary moral perfection, and not because God blesses them more than you and me. They are saints because the light of God shines through them and they are made holy. And as this light of God casts colors that inspire you and me, they make us move, they lift us up, and they help us to discover our own holiness. By the nature of their lives, these saints inspire us to live faithfully. There's a story of two men, Dr. David Livingston and Henry Stanley. Dr. David Livingston was a famous missionary who, in Africa, disappeared into the jungles. And Henry Stanley was an explorer who went to search for Dr. Livingston. And after a lengthy search, he finally found Dr. Livingston and gave us that famous line from his history, Dr. Livingston, I presume. The two men lived together for three months, and some time after that, Henry Stanley wrote in his memoir that Dr. Livingston made me a Christian, and he didn't even know he was doing it. He inspired me, and he didn't even try to. Saints are those whom the light of God shines through. On this All Saints weekend, we remember the people in our lives who have died. In a little bit in our prayers, we are going to read the names of those dear loved ones of our community who we are remembering as saints. But they are not saints simply because they died. They're not saints because during their life they seem to have it all figured out, or they had a perfect prayer life, or their service to church and community were the most exemplary. On the contrary, Jesus tells us that even in their imperfections, even in their ordinariness, even in their vulnerability, they are blessed by God. They are windows through whom the light of God shines, and we give thanks for their lives and their examples of faithful living, which continue to inspire us in our own lives. These loved ones of ours began their sainthood long before their death. It began for them in the waters of their baptism where it begins for each one of us, for you and for me. By the virtue of our baptism, we are all saints, even while we are sinners. So as we look around, we see saints, grandmothers and grandfathers, mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, sons and daughters, friends, the tiniest of babies, to the oldest among us. We are all saints. We are the living saints of God. We are God's holy people, blessed, and our lives are an inspiration to one another. And when we confess that we believe in the communion of saints, this also includes our loved ones who have died. It also includes the person at the grocery store or the person on the other side of the globe, or the person that is sitting next to you this morning. We need each other. We need this communion of saints because as saints we help one another hear the words of God and see blessing. When we are in the midst of pain and sadness or mourning, we remind one another of God's blessings. When we are at the height of our careers or the peak of our health, we remind one another of God's blessings. You don't have to be strong. 
You don't have to be super smart. You don't have to be old. The tiniest among us can even be the window through whom the light of God shines. And this was made very clear to me a couple of years ago on a very normal Sunday during communion. I was serving communion and this little four-year-old came up with arms crossed to receive a blessing. And I traced the cross on his forehead and I said, you are a child of God, a gift to all of us, and Jesus loves you. And he looked at me very matter-of-factly and said, well, Jesus loves you too. (laughs) No one told him to say that. He was just inspired and he said it. He is a saint. He is important to me. He's important to all of us in this communion. And his simple words, Jesus loves you too, summarize the works of the four saints whose image adorns our front window. His simple words proclaim the message that is the good news of Christ. And at his baptism, this little four-year-old was given a candle. And these words were said to him, let your light so shine before others that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And that is exactly how this little guy is living. He may not totally understand it, he's just living his life. And just like those kids in preschool chapel who tried stepping on the light that was coming through the back window, they may not necessarily know where the light is coming from or how the glass in the window bends the light to create that awesome rainbow on the sanctuary floor. They just delight in the rainbow and try and catch it. God is shining God's light through each one of us and this light is cast in directions all around us. So let's be generous with our lives and open with our hearts so that others may delight and be inspired by the rainbow of color that we cast to the world. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.